Welcome to lecture 8. In this video, we're going to clean incorrect values from the dataset. After we have normalized the dataset in the previous video, we can identify new problems. For instance, in the air temperature column, we see a few missing values, indicated by null. For the soil humidity, we see also a few strange values that are out of the expected range, between 0 and 100%. And for the ambient light, we see a value that does not correspond to a floating point data type, but to a string value. In addition, while maybe not strictly cleaning, we see that the timestamp is given as a Unix timestamp, and we might want to change this into a column with a more human readable form. So first, how do we remove missing data? With Denfo.js, we can select a series of the data frame using the column name. So we have a series DS that we get from df.airtemperature. And we preprint it. In the console, we see this data series, including the null values. We then can easily call the method dropNA to drop all the null values from this series. If we print the series that we get, then we see that rows 4 and 8 are missing. We have now cleaned the series. Something similar we can do if the data type is incorrect. So for the ambient light, we want to remove the sixth row with the error message. We do this by forcing the ambient light series to be of a certain type, for instance, float32, a floating point number. Whenever this conversion fails, it will turn into another number value. We can then use the drop NA method in the previous slide to remove this row of data. What about the data that is out of bounds, out of the expected range? That's a bit more complex. What we want to do is filter all the valid rows from the soil humidity. In this case, we select from the series DS all the values that are greater and equal than zero, that's the GE, and at the same time, it should be lower or equal than 100, that's the LE method. The result, we force it to be a Boolean, so that for each row, we get a true or false value. If the value is true, then it's an in-range value. If it's false, then it is out of range. We can now use the lock method on the data frame to select only the rows where the value is true, which are valid. That's given here. And then the end result will give the series with the rows two and three missing, the ones that are out of bounds. Now that we know the strategies to clean our data, we want to automate the task. And we will use the data dictionary to do this. Because in our data dictionary, we have specified the data type, in this case string, and for the air temperature, float32. Since we do this for every field in our data set, we can use this type to force the data to be in that series to be of this type. Similarly, we have to find a valid range for each of the fields in our data dictionary, for the temperature, for the humidity, and this means that we can also use this valid range field to automate the task of cleaning the data. So in our strawberry data utils file, we now create a new method clean data. This first calls the ensure data structure method that we created in a previous video to ensure that the data is normalized. Then we put it into the done for data frame and we add this extra column to create a human readable date. After that, we want to do the automated cleaning tasks. So what we do is for each value in the data dictionary, so for each of the fields basically that are in our data dictionary, we are going to apply the cleaning steps in our code. We use the S type method 
to force the data type of a certain series. Where the series name is given by item.field, remember item is a field in the data dictionary, and field is the name in our data, and we supply the type it should convert it to, given also in item, item.type. After this conversion, everything that cannot be transformed, it will turn into null values, and we call the drop and name method to remove all unwanted rows. After that, we apply our filtering trick using the greater than and less than functions on the range, the valid range in our data dictionary, to also clean out of range values. After that, we have a new data frame that is cleaned and we return this to the user as clean data. In the strawberry data utils, we then add this clean data to the exported list of functions so that we have an extra method in our data cleaning library. In our main.js file, we now call the clean data method instead of the ensure data method. And the result we plot in the after cleaning element as a table. If we look in the browser for the result, we now see that the unclean data has been removed. There are no null values, no strange values in the humidity, and we have a human readable form for the date and time, which makes it easier to plot the data.